Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Musi's Modern Dreadfuls. And I hope you had a wonderful Halloween. I hope you enjoyed the Halloween special. And by the way, welcome, welcome, welcome to my new subscribers. I hope you enjoyed the story. I do want to let you know it will be remastered when all Hades is not breaking loose all around me. Because, yeah, wildfires. And uh, you all know the story. But anyway, find where we were. Go to There's a Locked Door in My New Apartment playlist. And that's where we are. We're going to finish this series. And here we go. I returned to my apartment, replaying the entire conversation in my mind for a while. I couldn't imagine what Vincent was going through. I pushed the thoughts out of my head and decided I had to mentally prepare for my journey in the storage room tonight. 3.19 a.m. came faster than usual, and as always, the door opened. I lazily got up from my chair and ventured inside, through the corridor and into the dilapidated apartment room. Martin was there as always. He bowed his head down, but I simply ran past him. I couldn't afford to waste any time. I was ready to rush through the first floor towards the stairs when I heard a loud ding to my right. I jerked my head toward the sound and saw one of those old style elevators with metallic bars, which could slide to the side. It was open and the lights inside were on, which contrasted the rest of the rundown building, which was beckoning to me. I hesitated for a moment, but then decided whatever the elevator was going to take me to probably was in fact my desired destination. Besides, if the apartment wanted to kill me, there were plenty of other ways it could have done it by now. So I entered the elevator and observed the buttons. All of them besides the button for floor three were missing. So I pressed that one. The elevator door slowly closed with a loud rusty creak. A moment later, it started ascending, producing all sorts of unnerving metallic and scraping sounds. I thought the elevator would stop at any moment, or worse, just start dropping. But before I could process that thought properly, it came to a stop and the door opened with another loud ding. In front of me was a very dark hallway. The elevator light and my torch barely illuminating anything. The floor looked like a metallic platform and not a regular one. I could see between the tiny bars of the floor, but my flashlight only revealed more darkness. I took a careful step forward, testing to see how stable it was. When I was sure I wouldn't just collapse or the floor wouldn't just collapse under my weight, I went forward, making sure to walk slowly and carefully. On both sides of the hall were sturdy, rusted doors with numbers on them. This was definitely my floor. The metal resounded under every step. I took very careful and calculated steps because I was afraid that if anybody was nearby, they'd hear me from a mile away. After a grueling minute of going forward through the dark, I started to see something in the distance, a faint light emanating from the left wall ahead. I hurried up as it became apparent that the light was coming from one of the rooms, from room 304. I felt an irresistible urge to rush inside the room and 
as I felt myself walking towards it and without my control, I completely gave into that feeling and just went on as if I was drawn. Everything would be all right. All I had to do was reach the room. And then just as I was only a few feet away from the room, I felt something grab me by the hand and forcefully yank me aside opposite of 304. I lost balance and fell sideways, scrambling to my feet in a panic. When I stood up, I realized I was in the dilapidated room with the light from 304 peering in across the hallway through the door. A young woman stood in front of me. Don't go in there. That's what it wants you to do, she said. It was Michelle. It's about time you found me, Michelle said when she got no response from me. It is you, I said. I went through hell and high water to find you here because you called me. What in the hell is going on here? I know. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But you need to stop others from getting hurt by the apartment, Michelle said. Tell me everything, I said. What do I need to do? <sighs> she sighed and closed the door, effectively cutting off the light from room 304. As soon as she did so, though, a pale neon light flickered to life in the room. I could finally see Michelle clearly. She had heavy bags under her eyes and looked a lot skinnier and paler than the version of her which I saw back when I first entered the apartment. She very much reminded me of the creaking lady. I glanced at the surrounding walls and saw various messages scrawled all over them, just like the ones when I first entered the apartment. Can't get out. Who is the landlord? Can't remember. Creak. Some of the messages had names of who I assumed were the tenants of the building and previous tenants of room 304. The entire room with nothing in it but a small set of chairs next to a table. And as I looked, I noticed the walls, the carved walls, looked like the residing place of a schizophrenic person. For a moment, I questioned my decision to even come here. Let's sit. She pointed to the set of rusty chairs around the small round table, and I reluctantly obliged. She stared down at me for a good 10 seconds or so with her tired eyes before saying, if you're here, then you're in danger as well. This apartment, well, there's something very wrong with it. Yeah, no shit. I scoffed, getting impatient and anxious. You don't understand. The stuff you saw, they're messed up all right, but you have no idea to what extent that goes. She leaned forward as she spoke. Then tell me, tell me everything. What is going on? How did you end up here? How do we close the door forever? I need to know everything. She leaned back into the uncomfortable chair and said, the door can't be closed. I tried bolting it shut, but the door just doesn't obey the normal laws of physics. Then we need to think of something else, I said. Michelle looked down at the old table with a defeated glaze. Her eyes were very tired and the bags just seemed to increase in intensity. She sighed and spoke. I moved here not long ago. 
Everything seemed perfect, save for that storage door. It was locked, and I didn't mind it at all at first. But after only a few nights, I started hearing noises coming from inside. And not just regular normal noises like rats or whatever, even though I wish now that's what it was. I swear I heard voices. She leaned in again, and her voice turned into a whisper. What kind of voices? My mom. She passed away a few years ago, but she sounded like she was right there in that storage, in trouble, begging me to come save her. But I couldn't get the door open. And then when I called the police, the voices stopped. So they didn't believe me. Then one night the door just opened. It always opened and closed at the exact same time. I was sad for her, but I carried on. Yeah, 319 and 419, I nodded. Exactly. Except when I entered, it wasn't a storage. It was a hallway from the hospital where my mother died. I couldn't believe it at first. It looked like I was back in that hospital, but it was physically impossible for me to be there and here. But the deeper I went, the deeper I wanted to go. I had to find out if my mother was there. The hospital hall stretched for much longer than it should have. And then when I finally reached the end, I felt my self entering this, this world. I was strangely drawn to the room where my mother was hospitalized, which happened to be on the fourth floor. So I followed my instinct and I went there, except when I got there, it wasn't the patient's room. It was room 304 with the door wide open and my mother calling me from inside. So I rushed inside and then I realized it was a trap. The apartment, it wanted me to get to room 304 so that it could be mine or I could be it, whatever. I would be trapped in 304 forever. It would trap me here like an animal. Once you get inside room 304 from this side, you're there forever, period. Trapped? Is that why you've been in here this whole time? I asked, hanging on every word Michelle said. What does the apartment want? And what the hell is it exactly? Michelle shook her head. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, its only purpose is to trap people here and then feed off their life until all that's left of them is an empty husk. I've been stuck in here for months and I know I'll never, ever make it out. There's got to be a way to release you from here. There's got to be. She shook her head again. No, I tried everything. Believe me. Even my sister tried to save me. Since I informed her of everything before going in this place. But when she came, she didn't make it out of the limbo between our world and this world before the 419 AM doors closed. Now she haunts this place as a mindless husk producing a horrible sound of creaking doors. Wait, it all started coming together. The creaking lady is your sister? You've seen her, haven't you? Poor Daniela. Such a horrible, horrible fate. <gasps> she looked down, tears forming in her eyes, and then back at me. I'm sorry to keep crying, but you have to destroy this place. 
burn it to the ground. Release us and everyone else who fell victim to 304. Please, please. But then you'll die too, won't you? Please, Nathan. I can feel myself getting weaker every day and losing myself. I can hardly remember my past life and the people I loved. The apartment. It takes everything away from you. That's why I made these reminders on the walls, but every day I forget more and more. I don't want to end up like my sister, Nathan. Please. <gasps> Again, she started sobbing. A moment later, she calmed down and spoke again. And with that, we have the end to 13 of There's a Locked Door in My Apartment. And we will be finishing up this series and moving on to a new one soon. Please enjoy. I'm here to entertain you. That's what we're here for. And leave any comments, suggestions, any idea of what's going on. And double check your bells. I've heard several people saying their bells have not been going off. Or two people now have been unsubscribed magically without any action on their end. So keep an eye out for that. And you will get two uploads per week, as promised, and I will talk to you soon. Alrighty, bye.